Sis and tell, sis and tell. A whole lot of talk about a whole lot of nothing. Amanda does stand up. Allison's on TV. And when they hop on the phone, it's the place you want to be. Sis and tell. A whole lot of talk about a whole lot of nothing. Hey, Allie. Hey, man. How are you? I'm good. How are you? I've I've double bad news. <laughs> <laughs> you really just get into it. You never start. You should start with the good news. No. It should be a sandwich, don't you know? Oh, when come you on, give we know somebody going to be silly. When you give somebody Let's bad just... news, that you should always sandwich it with the good, good, so, bad, good. So number one, as you <laughs> probably are aware of, but maybe not because you've been out of the country, Jerry Springer passed away. I did hear that. Oh. The, God, the Godfather of. Uh, are you the father uh talk no, show? the godfather <laughs> of gotcha television gotcha right? television yeah did i ever and tell you my jerry springer story wait oh, let sorry. me tell you Go the ahead. second bad news <laughs> and then the you can tell news? me your jerry springer story the second bad news is all the shows are fake most of them if not all of them have been faked my friend alan was like, oh, Jerry Springer died. And here's the clip of the show I was on where I got me and my roommates to pretend like we were having a threesome. What? Yes. And then I told my friend this, and he goes, yeah, my friend did the same thing on Jerry Springer. So, and he said they got this, my friend Alan, he's like, yeah. they." Th I'm like, you had, he mentioned it on Facebook. The clips had no volume to it. Yeah. And I was like, you have to tell this story on TikTok. And he did. And he said, right before they went on, they looked at, the producers looked at them and said, you cannot burst out in laughter. And if we find out that you're lying, we're going to sue you for $80,000. Oh, my gosh. So they must have known that all these kids were, like, coming up with these fake stories so that they could be on Jerry Springer. And he said they got into it. Like, they, they really got into character and they got into a fake fight. Like that Steve had to like break it up and they must yeah. have believed them because on the way back, they were all supposed to be on the same flight and they ended up booking them on separate flights. Oh they, my gosh. They, so what is your Jerry Springer story? Okay. Well, first of all, these are little known facts about Jerry Springer. Number one, did you know mm -hmm. that he was born to Holocaust survivors? No, I didn't know that. Okay. Did you know he was mayor of Cincinnati? Yes, I did know that. Okay. Did, did you know yes. that he, there was some sort of something with a prostitute? their pictures or something <laughs> and that one of the reasons why he was so liked because he's like yeah i did it and people are like we can trust him because mm -hmm. he's like yeah i did that and like, well oh, he, when he i lived clean. yeah when i lived in chicago so this is like for four years in the early 90s um you know all those shows all those shows were very popular i i don't think i saw jerry springer i might have seen jerry springer i definitely saw oprah twice i saw the oprah show twice You're and so then i lucky. can't remember what other shows i saw because it's all a blur did you but win did you get anything at Oprah? Did was no, there anything underneath no your chair? Way. Did you get a minivan? No, one the of the shows one of the shows was like a bunch of the guests videoed in, which was so disappointing. Oh, I know. That was Zooming before Zoom. Zoom before Zoom. And I remember they always had you wear Skittles colors. You couldn't wear black, which was really disappointing also. You had to wear the color of a Skittles box or bag. Like the bright orange and yellow and red. They wanted the audience to look like a rainbow. So, which I get because it's visually more appealing, mm -hmm. but Jerry Springer was such a known commodity in, in Chicago that one day I was walking, um, it must've been like either the middle of the day, like during work, I was taking a break as I worked downtown. I'm walking down the street. Oh, it was, it was in the middle of, uh, we were going to lunch <laughs> and I'm okay to back, to back up. I worked at the Japanese consulate, right? So I'm going with my best friend, Ayumi, who's Japanese and we're walking down the street and all of a sudden I see Jerry Springer coming. And as I look <gasps> up, you know, it was so familiar. Like everybody, you just thought, you know, him. and I looked up, I was so surprised and I go, Hey, Jerry. <laughs> And he goes, hey, how are you? And I go, I am great. Thank you. He goes, great to see you. I go, you too. And we kept walking. And Ayumi goes, who was that? I go, it was, <laughs> it was Jerry Springer. And she goes, you know Jerry Springer? I said, no. <laughs> I've never met him in my life. And she goes, why did you act like you do him? I go, I have no idea. <laughs> Do you think he oh, knew he gosh. didn't know you or he oh, wasn't course. sure? Yeah. I think for people like that who are so part of 
you know, the public eye, I think he just automatically responds in kind. And that was, you know, his go-to He's, response. People have really good things to say about him. Yeah. You yeah. know, uh, I have to say that this happens to me. I bet it happens to you just around Chattanooga where people be like, hey, Allison. Right. <laughs> oh, my God. All <laughs> the time. And yeah. I have to be like, hey, oh, my God. And we talked about this last time that what our response is. And it's, it's good to see you. And that's what Jerry said. It's good to see you. Because that yeah. covers... I've seen you before, and it covers, I've never seen you in my life. Mm-hmm. Yep, that was my one and only Jerry Springer encounter. It was 100% positive, and um, may he, uh, may his memory always be a blessing, Jerry. Oh, yes. And so, that's not fake, and that's not fake. That is not fake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but you know what is fake? I am watching a new reality show. I always think I can't go any deeper into my depressing terrible. rabbit hole of yeah. terrible tv oh i think i'm watching but the worst i have one no i'm i might i'm okay let's see who's watching the worst reality show What's what if it's called? the same one? Oh my gosh <laughs> <laughs> mine is so bad and it's i can't turn away but it's mine's, so bad i promise you mine is worse i promise you mine is worse okay you go first then okay ready uh-huh flora bama shore I don't think you can get worse than that. There's so many things in those three words that, come on, Flora right, Bama. I might beat you. I've got okay. four words for you. Ready? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Farmer needs a wife. Oh, wow. That is good. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I want to watch it. Okay. So tell me about yours. So first of all, Flora Bama, isn't it Florala? I guess I mean, that's they a real place. My guess is they couldn't use that <laughs> because it's a real city. Right. It is. It's a real city. So maybe they had it trademarked or something. But, but so Florida, they did, Bama sounds crazy. It's PCB. It's Panama City. Yeah. That's so, funny. Is it like Jersey Shore meets the yes, Gulf Coast? Okay. It is the Jer- And I, look, I've actually never watched Jersey Shore. So I didn't know what the um, format is, but I'm assuming it's the same as Flora Bama, which. <laughs> It's which, uncomfortable to say. Which is basically, it's like the real world. Like, um, two of the people happen to know each other, but really they picked all these roommates to live with each other in a beach house, and they didn't know each other, but it's the same cast throughout every season. Okay. So the cast does not change, and that's what happens. Wait, so how many seasons are there that you've so, watched? Well, there's four, but much to Ruby's chagrin, I didn't want to spend $25 to purchase season four, so we ended season three last night, and then... I spent about 15 minutes trying to figure out how to get season four for free, and I cannot. So we've got to figure that out sooner or later. You're going to have to wait a year to get the free. They get you that way. It's so depressing. Yeah, but I'm really invested in these characters. I've looked all of them up on Instagram to see where (laughs) are they now, and I had some theories. So Yeah. Well, I do that with Love is Blind, which is my unapologetic, you know, just naughty watching and I just say naughty because it's just a waste of time not because they, the show is naughty but I love that show right. and um that is a but farmer show. needs a wife yeah that's tell me about I, that so I finished the current season of love is blind and I really still needed just one of those reality show sort of bachelor shows that wasn't the bachelor stumbled upon farmer needs a wife and it thought it would get better every episode but no it's just gotten worse I'm gonna rename it about the farmer Uh, so I'm gonna rename it in this sense and you'll get a gist of what it's about farmer needs a farmhand so (laughs) that's like wife swap (laughs) no it's like farmer's not looking for a wife farmer's looking for someone to do half the chores on his farm so I didn't know if it was like because there's the farmers like they're running an agricultural empire right farmer yeah it's just like a really rich kid who came from a long line of farmers and no, this now is it's not the like tyson. jr dallas now yeah. it's like the tyson chicken company right. or it's like really <laughs> <laughs> no these are these are you know bona fide farmers who work live on have been raised on the land they live all over the country one's in georgia one's in tennessee one might be midwest but they are all the the problem is you know reality show dating shows have been around for so long so there are definitely formats that work and don't work this format feels very flawed it's sort of like sort of like the bachelor meets um the that show with all the wives what's the what's the mormon show like the, the um, wi- uh sister wives sister wives yeah it's like the bachelor meets sister wives because all of the women 
have, first of all, all these women know that they're going to be dating a farmer and they got to see his profile beforehand. So they picked one farmer out of five, let's say. And then the farmer gets to see all these and picks a group of eight women to start and immediately has to reduce that number after one date, right? Like a 20 minute meeting has to reduce that down to five. And then those five women go and live with the farmer on his land. <sighs> But they all, it's this communal living and he only gets to choose one a week for like a, a private date, which feels really wrong. And are the some dates of the women, like doing chores? He's like, let's milk this cow together. Of them, right. One's like, well, on our way to our date, we've got to stop by and see the crops because it rained two inches last night. And of course, these women are mostly from the city and have never even been on a farm. They're but that's like, probably the reality of going on a date what? with him if you marry him. He's like, before we go out, we need to check on that pig that was supposed to give birth. And Exactly. Oh, sorry, it, it's we got the pig's in distress. We got to deal with the pig birth now. Right. But I don't feel like that's a real, look, it's to stop once on a date and do that, but to have this be your life day in and day out. Um, some of the women have just, un, you know, they've gone on their own volition. Some, the men are basically like, look, you've got, you've got bigger fish to fry. They love using all of their, their little isms, the um, their little statements. Yeah. yeah. And so they're like, um, you've got, you've got, you know, I, it's like clipping a wing from a butterfly. I couldn't keep you here if I wanted to, I got to do the right thing. And then some of them are just, I just don't know how they're making these decisions that are authentic and going to be long lasting, but I don't want to Google it yet. Right. I don't, cause I'm still, I'm not caught up. It hasn't ended the next, the next episode, they are going, the farmers have to go to the women's houses and meet their families. So, so. tell me this. Do you yeah. like the farmer? Is he likable at all? Because I'm not hearing anything about it, him being like endearing. He it depends sound... which farmer. I do like them all. Oh, so I it's do... multiple farms yeah. going it's... on at the same time. I think it's four or five. Now I can't remember, but at least four. And they are, some are very endearing and very authentic. There's one farmer named Alan who I'm not sure about if he's really right for the show. He's pretty shy and I just don't think he's, I just don't think a reality show to find a wife is him. He's divorced. And so I think he probably knows what he's looking for and what he's not looking for, but he just, this is not the show for him. There's another farmer. There's one black farmer. So I give him credit for that. And he diversity. Yeah. He, but he, he called a woman too emotional and let her uh -oh. go. And oh, so all the no. other women are very defensive. Here's the other thing. Do you mean they're being emotional? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> they're being emotional. Then they don't want to be emotional because they know that's a trigger for right. them. Right. Oh my God. It's like, it's like calling someone defensive and then you right. can't say anything because then you sound defensive. Exactly. Well, the problem is though, these women are all living together. So they've created really this bond with each other instead of a bond with the farmer is yeah. my fear. And they're also competing it's with each other fear. for him. That's my <laughs> fear, right? I mean, one of them just got kicked off the farm. <laughs> it's like getting kicked off the island. The farmer has spoken. Um, one just got kicked off the farm and like, She's like, says goodbye to him. And then she's hysterically crying, saying goodbye to the women. I mean, that tells you everything about the nature of how their relationships it's have blossomed. It's a game show. Yeah. It is a game show based in reality. And you know what? I was trying to explain to Ruby that the producers set up a lot of situations in the reality show, right? Yeah. Obviously with this, because there's a game show format to it. Where there's a winner, there's a loser. You you know what I mean. But with Flora Bama, I was like, <laughs> I, I was like, you think this woman just randomly came to Florida for two days? No, they they set that up. They this was all planned. They actually asked them to have these conversations over here yeah. to talk about this. And she's like, no. I'm like, yeah. I'm like trying to get her to. So it's, this all ties back in, you know, perfectly to the whole Jerry Springer show and this <laughs> idea. It does though. Like yeah. if we know, and even if we had a sense, like maybe we didn't know everything was a setup, but we knew there had to be some added drama at the very least if the stories weren't completely fabricated. And now there are these game show type reality shows where it's really not reality show, right? They call them unscripted, but I think the producers must you know, they must keep characters in there because of the drama. It's not scripted, but it's outlined. But it's outlined, right? So what is it, if we know this, right, as we're watching it, we know this can't be true. What is it that we are drawn to, right? What is it that attracts us to this idea of a false narrative, a false reality that calls itself true, right? Why does, and instead of just continuing to watch shows that are fiction and being drawn to characters that we know are fake, but that 
probably more accurately represent real life. Do you Look, see the I, irony here? I think it's just an amalgamation of all of these formats of TV that we've watched coming together, right? It is an evolution of different genres. Like the newlywed game has been around since the 70s, right? Love Connection. They've also just had documentaries, like the the reality style documentary of following a family around has been around gosh, probably since the 50s or 60s, you know, and PBS did some, has been doing that before anyone else did it. Right. So it's like a combination of these things. And then I feel like the MT, with MTV, it really affected the format because it wasn't geared towards a PBS audience. It was geared towards a different generation. So they had to up the ante and they had to create drama, right? So they're not following around roommates. They're following around seven strangers picked to live together who were probably picked because they knew they wouldn't necessarily get along or they would get along and they'd be having sex in front of the cameras. Right. So (laughs) (laughs) win-win they're either not getting along or they're really getting along. Well, I think, you know, like in any culture, there are these ideas of that soap opera, right? Which was that genre was so popular, especially in the, you know, the sixties, the seventies, what was it? The edge of night. I remember that, you know, was one of the first soap operas that came out. I used to come home and we used to joke that I'd watch, gen- there was, what is it? General hospital, one life to live and young and the restless. And, um, if I missed a week or even if I missed a month, it didn't matter. You could come back and watch that show two years later and eventually figure out what was going on because the storyline didn't change that much. And the characters certainly didn't change that much. They may have evolved slightly, but the, it was such a long timeline for the story to, to play out. Now, reality shows have taken that model of the drama Mm -hmm. that you found and that I think we were all attracted to in these daytime soaps, but they have put it on like high speed. So instead of it taking five years, right, for some character to admit his love for his, you know, stepmother's daughter or something, whatever that looks like, um, it happens within, you know, the first two episodes, (laughs) right. And then there's closure. Then by the end of eight weeks, you already know who loves who and what who's going with who. And then it's done yeah. until you Google it and realize that nothing that happened in the finale is actually happening in real life. So I think it's, I don't, it's very interesting. It's, it's fascinating to see if soap operas were the catalyst for what we're watching now in terms of reality shows in 20 years or even in five years, what are these reality shows going to be the catalyst for? Like, I think our appetites may be overfilled with all of these unscripted, and I put that in quotes, um, reality shows, there's got to be the next incarnation of that in terms of the entertainment industry. I'm just curious what that will look like. I don't know. We just have to tune in and see. (laughs) (laughs) If we could predict it, we would be filthy rich. We could just start it now. Well, I think we're going to see an influx of unscripted TV because there's a writer's strike going on right now. So that's when you see like an influx of those shows. Ruby actually sent me, what is it called? Uh, uh, A new show that's coming out called like Millionaire Island or something like that. And she asked, she really asked that me and you audition for it. That's the What is it? I don't know. You're on an island competing for millions of dollars. It's the most money that they've ever given away on a reality show ever. And I've got three kids who are all going to be in college in the next (laughs) five years. So, you know, what about that show who wants to be a millionaire? That show gave away a million dollars. Right, but that was based on this is potentially, like a, potentially right. This was like this is like Survivor, like you're oh. dropped, and this is what they say: you're dropped on a tropical island, right? But they make it sound like a vacation. That is not a vacation. Let no. me tell you, because Survivor is a tropical island filled with bugs and no food, <laughs> right? And you have yeah. to like balance on a pole on one foot for five hours in order to win. So, yeah, I couldn't do Survivor. No. So speaking of reality, I was basically on a reality show over the weekend, uh, except it wasn't record. You know what? It was recorded by the DeKalb County TV station. (laughs) 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 So Dancing with the Stars, which we've talked about before and uh, as a show, but also as a fundraiser, Allison, you participated in that. What? Like it was before the pandemic. Right. 
before the pandemic, Mimi came. So this oh. is a long time she ago. She was there? Wow. She was there, yeah. But it's the same concept as the TV show, right? But it's local celebrities paired with choreographers. I did it for um, a, a DeKalb County um, uh, organization to end domestic violence. And we were paired with choreographers. There was a... 10 couples that were a part of it. We had our big performance Saturday night, but I was like, why did they not, they should have like recorded the process of us preparing for all this stuff. One woman, she went through three partners, bless her heart. Which like is she, crazy. Right. She had, I think one person backed out. She had another choreographer who was fine and then had a family emergency three days before the show. Then it, uh, and so she ended up with a third. And then this other couple just disappeared. We don't know what happened to them. They didn't come to rehearsal. They weren't there um, Saturday night. All They put us in all the women. We had our own dressing room. It was so much fun until uh, this makeup artist walked in. <laughs> and I'm texting Braven, um, my friend slash choreographer, and I go, oh, my gosh, people are bringing in professional makeup artists, and I have an old lipstick. <laughs> <laughs> Other people, they were partnered, and Braven was fantastic. He is, like, a great choreographer and very talented. But there are these other people who ended up winning. They are partnered with choreographers who had danced with Alvin Ailey, right? Oh, my gosh. And I'm like, I'm more Al, I'm Ailing. Like, it's like... <laughs> it, was, it was so much fun. I didn't even... I didn't know any of these women, and we left all in a group text wanting to hang out afterwards. Um, but as we're, we're there like two hours, three hours before the show actually started and I don't know who's who. And there's this beautiful woman who is getting all of her stuff out, her, her makeup and her costume. And all of a sudden she takes out point shoes, right? Like ball she has two different like ballet point shoes. Yeah. Like ballet point shoes. And I'm like, well, we're screwed. There's a team who can do, <laughs> there's a team who can do point. And we're talking to her and we finally realize that. She is actually not a part of the competition. She is like part of the finale performance oh, just to perform. Whew. And I go, oh, and she said something. And I go, thank God you said that because I was worried you were a competitor. And all of the women were like, yes, oh, my God, I thought the same thing. Were you thinking of Nancy Kerrigan? Her? <laughs> no. <laughs> I was like, I'm losing. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, you can't, as, as friendly as we were, you can't help but, you know, look up the competition up and down and try and figure out what your chances are. And I was, I got to a point where, uh, oh, and I, oh, we had rehearsal Friday night, but we left right after we performed and evidently missed all the information about all these, like the, the run of show and all this stuff. So, um, I, I missed out on a lot of things, including the fact that once my performance ended, I couldn't change out of my costume, which was an Annie dress. Right. And I was like, <laughs> I was, so I did, I changed, cause I could, because I went in the, before intermission, we were allowed to go hang out with people. So I, ch I changed, I wasn't going to go wear my Annie dress during intermission, yeah, but I then I had you. to, I had to put it back in on, I had to put it back on and I was so it was like everyone's wearing these gorgeous, sophisticated costumes, and I'm in an Annie dress. But there was, <laughs> <laughs> but there was this one woman, and her um, she danced. She actually danced with her father, who's a pastor, to a song from The Wiz. So he had been dressed up like the Tin Man, and she was Dorothy. And I looked at her backstage, and I go, "Thank God you're here. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we need to stick together. We need to stick together." And I looked at her, and I go do you keep on looking for pockets in your dress? And she goes, yes. I go, me too. I, they need to put pockets in these costumes. They also had these, um, these little girls, these like upper elementary and like middle school girls who are there from like the uh, DeKalb School of the Arts and IB Girls School who are performing. And they, they were like, this one girl goes, are you Annie? And I'm like, <laughs> yes, I am. She goes, are you performing? And I looked her right in the eye and I go, no, no. <laughs> now I'm just here backstage in an Annie costume. Yeah. Anyway, so two I, things about that is I one, lost. I lost. That's one thing. <laughs> no, not that you lost. First of all, I've seen the video. You looked amazing, and I think the fact that you were able to like memorize and do that three minute dance is three minutes sounds short. It is so it is long. Not. It is not it is short. So it long. was so long. Yeah. Um, the second of all, um, well, this is still my first of all. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You, you you confused me. 
Um, I feel like, you know, I give you a lot of credit, not just for doing it, but I think as adults, and I said this when I did this years ago, as adults, we, we find our wheelhouse and we find our comfort zone. And even though I like to try new things, I think it's very rare that we actually try new things the way a kid does, right? A kid will be like, I'm done with soccer. I'm going to try ultimate Frisbee or golf or basketball or ice skating, or I'm going to go, you know, climb this mountain. You know, I think there's a, a more of a, an appetite for adventure in terms of expanding what we are good at and what we play, right? Like my age, the only thing people are expanding into is pickleball at this point. And nothing oh against pickleball, but oh, it, you know. I've had enough of pickleball. Yeah. So I think the fact that you did that and learned this whole routine, put yourself like in the public eye on stage performing um, is awesome because don't, didn't you feel like, and you're a stand-up comedian, so you put yourself out of most people's comfort zones for a profession, but didn't you feel like that was a way for you to really expand like your comfort zone in terms of um, how you approached um, the possibility of learning something new? Yeah. And, you know, and there's a difference between dancing at a wedding and a bar mitzvah yeah. and learning choreography and being one of two people on a ginormous stage it is it was yeah. intimidating it was scary I didn't think I could do it every time I had a choreography session I was like this isn't happening what have I gotten myself into I feel like my brain didn't have the capacity to learn three minutes of choreography forget about my body and what it was right. capable of but yeah I really enjoy putting myself in scary situations like that but nothing that puts me in harm's way. Right. I won't do that. Like you will go bungee jumping. I will not do that. I will not do anything that is like puts me in f physical harm. But well, not that I'm mental. bungee jumping now. That was right. in my twenties. But even the Dancing with the Stars, like something like that, reminded me that there's so much to learn. And I think you know, too often we find ourselves in these situations where we're we're honing the skills we already have. And I think when we do that, you know, we can grow still. And I'm not saying we should stop doing that, but we should also, it's a, it's a both and we should also be trying to acquire new skills that, that challenge us mentally or physically or emotionally, spiritually. And I think for you that, that might've ticked every box. So yeah. Um, second of all, I still had a second of all, I thought of you because Alan and I were watching the 90th birthday celebration and special for Carol Burnett. And they did a <gasps> whole thing. Do you believe she's 90? Do you believe she's 90? She is unbelievable, iconic, brilliant, kind. Every story about her was about how unbelievably nurturing and kind and loving and, and genuine she was from the start of her career till, till now to everyone she met. And, um, and they had the whole, a bunch of, well, not the whole, but many of the cast of the, the movie, Annie, including the woman who actually played Annie. Eileen Quinn. Oh, okay. If you say so. Is that I, her name? I know so. <laughs> yes. How do you know? I memorized the, the credit, all the credits running at the beginning and ends. Yeah. Well, as soon as they showed a clip from her, I went, oh my gosh, I have seen this movie a thousand times because of Amanda. I said she would not stop watching this movie. I and Alan's like, Carol Burnett was in it. I go, yeah, she was Miss Hannigan. Mm -hmm. She was so good. She is so talented. Anyway, thought of you, the Annie, the Annie. And now you're adult Tim, Annie. It's come full yeah. circle. Tim Curry, he was great. Oh, so good so as many Rooster. Great yeah. Bernadette Peters was part of it. Oh, yeah. It was amazing. So, mm -hmm. oh my gosh, such a throwback. All right, what's next for you? What's your next, like, equivalent to Dancing with the Stars that you are going to take on or oh. be open to? Oh, um, uh, my oldest going to college in a year? That's pretty uncomfortable. <laughs> but that's not but you exciting. doing it. Know, that's I'm him joking. doing it. That's, that's a challenge for you him. You know what? These, the uh, opportunities kind of come to me, right? Okay. I don't always seek them out. Like they present themselves to me. Like when I was in that play, that was really scary. I didn't go audition for a play. I was asked to audition for a play. I didn't even know about it. This, someone said, hey, you should dance in this. So I feel like I just continue doing my thing and someone will come to me and be like, hey, can you do this? And then I'll be like, all right. <laughs> me too. I'm going to be open to it. I'm Maybe it'll be. Yes. Yes. Okay. So that sounds like uh, we're both going to be open 
to auditioning for uh, that tropical <laughs> island millionaire island show. Good. I'm glad we will you be said dropped, that. We will be dropped on a tropical island vying for a million dollars. It's just 30 to days. To put Amanda's children through college. It's just okay. 30 days. Well, I'm an empty nester. I got plenty of time. I'll so split you let them, me know I'll when. I'll split it with you. I'll be nice. <laughs> <laughs> I just think we would be so good on one of those shows. Or terrible. And either way, it's going to make for great television. <laughs> Well, in the words of Jerry Springer, till next time, take care of yourselves and each other. Thanks. Is that Lester Holt? <laughs> no, that was Jerry Springer's final thought. Oh, my gosh. That's what Lester Holt says. He really? Yes. He say, take care of yourselves and no. Yes. That's Jerry. You're, ma- you're, you're mixing them up. I'm not mixing them up. Lester Holt on NBC Nightly News to, to currently says, take care of yourself and each other. Lester Holtz, sign off words. I'm telling you, I watch Lester every night. I can't believe he stole his sign off from Jerry Oh, Springer. you're right. He does. <laughs> <laughs> what a way to end the podcast. Oh, my talk God. About, talk about reality not being real. Okay. It's both Lester and Jerry have the same words. I know. They literally Jerry had it first. Jerry literally. had it first. Who oh knew? my God. Now we've got to look up the Lester Holt connection for next time. For next time. Well, thanks for listening to the latest Sis and Tell podcast. Don't forget to share us with your friends, share us with your family, share us with your foes. As always, this has been Amanda and Allison with a whole lot of talk about a whole lot of nothing. We'll catch you next time. Sis and Tell